Hi chat, today I'm going to read you a story about a girl. A girl that got moved around the world, experienced heavy things, and is still looking for a place to call home. It is going to be a longer one, but one that I really want to tell. It's a story that I personally can relate to, and that's because it's about me, Nia Chu. When I was young, my life wasn't that easy. As a kid, you want to have fun, have friends, live a carefree life. Well, mine wasn't really like that. I grew up for the first couple of years in Germany in a small town called Böblingen. Even when I was really young, would move around a lot. I probably moved around every couple of months. My mom got divorced uh, when I was really young and so I would go back and forth between my mom and my dad as well and they would live in different cities. So yeah, I, I, moved, I moved around a lot. I don't really have a number, but I moved around a lot. Both of my parents were working, so they weren't around that much. I don't really have many core memories with my parents from when I was really young. When I was six years old, I was kidnapped by my mom's ex-husband. My brother and me, we were going on vacation to Mallorca in Spain. Um, we were supposed to go home and we never showed up back in Germany. It was a really weird situation because we would still call, like during the summer vacation, we would call our mom like once a day and then the calls got less and less. And then one day we just never got to call her because obviously at the point we didn't have phones or anything. So we got completely cut off from our mom. Um, I remember every time when we were calling, she was crying. One day she showed up at our uh, apartment that we were living, living at at the moment. And I saw her for a couple of hours and then I didn't see her for three years after that. Um, uh, yeah. One day, my mom just showed up in the middle of the night. She told us, get in the car, we're going to the airport. I didn't really realize what was happening. When you're so young, it, like, everything feels normal. She set us in the car, we flew to Austria and that's where she was living with her current boyfriend, or back then current boyfriend. Having to go to court about everything, I slowly realized like, oh, okay, this is not normal. I was first nine years old when I had to go to court. That was after my mom's ex-husband showed up at my school, at my new school. Um, I remember he handed me something, I didn't even look at it. Um, started panicking. The teacher threw him out. And right after that, I called my mom. I was picked up by some lady that I didn't know. And we drove to a parking lot and switched cars and drove over the border. I think it was Sweden to disappear for a little bit so he doesn't find us. God knows what he would do if he did. A couple of months after that, we started going to court. We finally got the letter that he has a restraining order. He's not allowed to go near us. And he's also banned from Switzerland, which later on, my mom moved to Switzerland. When I was 11, I fell into a really deep depression realizing everything that had happened. Um, at that point, my family home also wasn't very safe because of the new husband, like my mom's new husband and um, just a bunch of like family troubles. So my house wasn't very safe. I didn't feel very safe because of what happened. Um, so I got really depressed and I had a lot of trouble going to school. I grew up in a very like, like my family was very traditional, very old school. And a big thing that I would always hear when I saw my brothers um, play video games was girls can't play video games. It's not girly to play video games. So I would actually steal their Nintendo DS's and play in secret. The more they would tell me not to do it, the more I wanted to do it. Cause I was intrigued. Like, what do you mean it's not girly? What do you mean I'm not allowed to play it, but they are. 
I got my first laptop. I think I started playing Minecraft with my friends. I also played The Sims a lot. I love The Sims. I would say maybe a year into me just, you know, playing on my little laptop gaming, I discovered the game League of Legends and that kind of opened up the floodgates to me just wanting to learn about new games, play new games. So gaming became a really big hobby of mine. When I was 17, I decided that I would pick up streaming. You know, I, I didn't think I would get anywhere. I would just, I just wanted to entertain myself somehow. So I would stream every day and I started building a really small community of like 25 people. It was really sweet. Everyone was really nice. I moved back to Berlin and I went back to school. I picked up a job. I worked at a bakery and I also still wanted to stream. Maybe a month or two before COVID hit in like 2019, I see a tweet saying, love or host. And I, <laughs> I, I honestly signed up for it as a joke, got accepted to the pre-show interview, which is where they vet you, you know. I was told that I was on the show 20, 20 minutes before the show actually started. I was so nervous, um, but I just tried to be myself and ended up winning. That night, I went from 300 followers to 15,000. It was weird when I streamed the next day and I barely could reach out because it was going so fast, going from, you know, 25 people to 600 at that point. Korea has been the most help that I could ever ask for. She set up all the bots in my channel. She set up all the banned words in my in my Twitch chat. We call it being an internet janitor in, in, in amongst ourselves. It's just making sure that chat is safe, both for the community and for Nikki. A friend sent a stream to me and I was like, oh, maybe I can help. So I sent a DM to one of the admins and they were like, oh yeah, you're a normal person. <laughs> you can help us. And so that's how I started modding. The Dream SMP started a couple of months before I joined and it was just a silly server for friends to hang out. The whole idea of the Dream SMP was like there were different, you know, there were people from Europe, there were people from America and those are the different countries. And the people from Europe made their own little country. The beginning days of the Dream SMP were really fun. It was, again, just us like goofing around and making up silly stories, but the more the server grew, it became really overwhelming really fast because it was also growing so quickly um, and no one expected it to grow so quickly. A part of the community started becoming really toxic. It was a big change for us moderators because her channel was changing, her community was changing. So we had to change with it. We went from having basically two active mods to having to recruit dozens more because it wasn't enough to be only one person on stream. The chat would go so fast. All of a sudden, it wasn't just Nikki's community that we had in chat, it was also everyone else's. You know, usually it's all excitement and then all of a sudden it would turn to hate. It was mainly women. At first it was all love and everyone was so nice and kind and then it switched and all of a sudden I would get death threats. I would, I, I would, I wouldn't even be able, I wasn't even be able to talk in the same voice channels as my friends, in the same streams as my friends. The Dream SMP guys kind of felt like a boy band. Like if you imagine a boy band and a boy band's fan base. A lot of them are teenage girls and it, it, it happens so many times in history. You see you see a girl hang out with your favorite boy band, that girl gets hate. So I think a lot of it is internalized misogyny. We as women grow up to be pitched against each other. And I don't want to blame anyone because, you know, we were all really young and we all didn't know what was going on and it was all very overwhelming for us. On the server, they were no one really supported us. No, not like none of the girls got, you know, 
a nice message hey i'm sorry this is happening to you or on stream like no one would like none of the guys would say anything about the hate that we would receive they all knew about it i started isolating myself a lot from those people just because i i couldn't go on stream with them anymore because then i would receive so much hate the hate that i received varied i'd say like every generic insult you can throw at someone um, and that's what showed me that a lot of it came from people who didn't know me. As a woman, she would have to be careful of everything she she was wearing on stream, how she would even move, which was crazy. Because <laughs> she's playing video games, why would that even be a focus? She'd have to be careful about so many things that she wouldn't have to be about before. I tried to ignore it, um, but it got worse and it started leaking into my chat even though my mods are godsend and they are they work overtime <laughs> to make sure that my chat is as nice and welcoming as possible but i would still you know see the comments and uh, i would still check because if people on the internet are talking about you you want to know what they're saying when we realized that everyone kind of like turned up against her was after an MCC or something where she cried on stream because it was extremely stressful. Lots of people were coming to her stream to tell her how bad she did. It would always be people in the comments being like, oh, not that whiny little girl, like, what is she doing here? She doesn't even have the strength to be a streamer on the internet if she can't handle that because she would talk about it. She would be like, why are you doing this, guys? Like, that's there's no reason. Why am I not allowed to show emotions on stream? People in their lives will have stress reactions. People in their lives will cry, you know? So I just quickly wanted to say something. You are f You are f for making fun of someone with a mental illness. People would take these words and be like, you're just weak. You don't, you shouldn't be a streamer as if you can't handle a little, a little criticism. It isn't criticism to say that someone is dog shit on Minecraft and needs to die. Like that is harassment. That is bullying on the internet. That, that is a crime. <laughs> So no, she's not weak for that. She, she's just a normal human. Right before I started receiving all the hate, I noticed uh, like weird Reddit pages about me. Um, and it was all like very sexual. And I, I, I never like knew that was a thing. Um, I came to find out that these were deep fakes, meaning people would you know, put my head on naked women's bodies or uh, Photoshop me without clothes on or, you know, all sorts of weird stuff. And at first I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was completely like, why would anyone ever do that? That's so weird. Um, but my mods really helped me with that. Um, they would help me take down a lot of the discords. Um, reason being, a lot of the pictures that people used were me being underage. My my head mod Corey, she she was like, I got you. We're doing anything that we can to take these down. Reddit policies are terrible to take down these kind of things. We would just have to scroll on those Reddits, report them, send dozens of emails every day. Honestly, she did she did everything that she could, um, and I'm so grateful and so thankful because. A big thing of it also would be if I had to do that myself, I would have to see all these pictures of myself. I would have to go through the discords. I would have to go through the reddits. I would have to go through the porn sites. And I couldn't do that. We got rid of the reddits and people noticed that we got rid of them. So they started making private discords about it. At that point, I was 18, 19. The pictures were from when I was 16, 17. So we were able to get those discords at least taken down. I try to be a big advocate for laws to be enforced mm -hmm. because in my opinion, that's sexual harassment. I cried every day. A couple of months in, I like started getting physical reactions. Whenever I would try to go live, I would have panic attacks. When your dream turns into a nightmare, what do you do? Because the one thing that you'd be excited about when you start your day suddenly is 
scary as hell, you start having panic attacks about it. If you took all the bits of joy in your life and you just decided to completely flip them and make them the worst part of your day. I isolated myself from every one of my friends and it just felt like I was sinking deeper and deeper and I didn't know how to get out of it. Moving forward, I just kept streaming. I haven't been streaming as much as I could because like I said, I still get panic attacks from, yeah, sometimes from uh, starting, starting to stream, but I've gotten a lot better and I've really been enjoying streaming lately and creating content again. So yeah, that's me moving forward. I think the main positive from all of, like everything that has happened from the very start until now is that I know I have such amazing fans and I have amazing friends. I always feel like I can never give back as much as they have given me. I think my mods play a really big role in my community. I could not ask for anything better. From the very beginning, all I wanted was to make people smile and to make people feel less alone because that's what I needed when I was younger. And that's what I searched for in creators and in, in YouTubers and streamers. It took me a long, long time to realize that I could be that for people. It still doesn't fully register in my head that I could be that for people because I'm just, I'm just a girl. But <laughs> I, I love my community and I, again, would never want anything else. After the Dream SMP, she decided it's time I put my stream back on what I wanted to be about. And that's when she started focusing on therapy, mental health a lot. She started doing streams with therapists and it kind of brought back her audience on those kind of subjects, which her core audience might not have been talking about, but were interested in. And suddenly like all the people that were like, oh, emotions bad left. I talk a lot about mental health, not just my mental health, but mental health in general. I talk a lot about women's issues, especially in the gaming community. Um, I talk a lot about, especially recently, I have been talking a lot about what happened on the Dream SMP, you know, talking about how little support I got from the people around me. My community being there for me and supporting me and understanding, I really, really appreciate that. Do you think that, like, moving here to L.A. kind of, in a way, makes you kind of, like, start a new chapter and and distance yourself from these things? I think so. Um, obviously, I'm, like, really far away from it here. Mm. But also, like, I, I have never felt this, like, obviously, because I'm older now, but, like, this mature and, like, yeah, an you're adult. you're so old. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't understand, but, yeah. I know, you wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like so much more, like, I feel like so much more like a real person mm. here because I'm like, you know, fully on my own and like just doing the thing. One thing I really want to focus on in the future is I want to become a psychiatrist. And at first it was like, oh, I want to help children and mm. like adolescents like growing up. And now I really want to focus on helping streamers and content creators. Um, I know, but I have so much experience, you know, yeah. so no, I, that's and I think we all need some therapy sometimes or just like someone to talk to. So many people think that there needs to be something severely wrong to go to a therapist. So it's like if you hurt your knee, you go to the doctor. Right. But like why, why it doesn't, like if your head hurts, why don't you understand that you should go to a psychiatrist? Right. And I feel like that's, and especially the same with the whole alpha male thing, mm -hmm. like men don't need therapy. Yeah. That is for women. You yeah. know, it's such, we need to get I don't need of, to talk about my feelings. Yeah. Yeah, you do. There's obviously a lot of misogyny in gaming in general, and I'm sure you've experienced a fair deal of it too. What is your take on how, not only how you, how it was to experience it, but also how can we get better at dealing with it to be better role models? Mm. You know, it's so normalized to make these like derogatory like jokes about women. And whenever women speak out about it, they're being emotional. Um, yeah. And then young boys are gonna see that and grow up with that. Just have open conversations about these topics. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid of having difficult conversations. 
if I'm in a game and there's a girl that gets harassed in my game, I should speak up on it. Mm -hmm. like, it even though it's not directly an attack on me, yeah. I should show that I do not agree with the statement. And then hopefully your viewers will also think that it's wrong. Yes, I agree. I'm really glad to see that you uh, seem much happier now because we've been talking a lot about these things over the last years and I'm really proud of you for mm -hmm. like standing up for yourself and making the choices that you think are best for your own health and happiness. Thank you. I don't know if America has home yet. I don't know what to look for in finding a home. I'm grateful to be in LA and I'm grateful for the experience that LA is giving me. It's a weird topic for me to talk about because on one hand, again, I'm so grateful to be here and LA is fun. But on the other hand, it's very isolating and it's so different from everything that I've been used to. I want to inspire people and I want to keep paving the way for young girls. The thing I've always tried to show people is that you can get here by being kind. You always hear like to be at the top you have to be mean or mess people like fuck people over. You can be here by being kind and you can be here by helping each other out. <laughs>